What is going on, party people? Welcome to episode 42 of the What Nots Review Show. My name is Kyle Springer, and joining me as always is Melissa Wilkinson. Melissa, how are you? I'm good, Kyle. How are you doing? Doing good. Already changing things around, experimenting, doing all 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 types of stuff. Uh, new new house. Yeah. Maybe we'll start making some small changes. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's great. I'm back on caffeine. Um, <laughs> life you is good. It, Kingdom I think. Hearts is out. I'm super it excited. It is out about today. Yeah. It is. It is. I played for three hours last night, and then I was like, oh, yeah, I have to go go to work. I should get some sleep as it's like four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> that is important. Yes. Last night, I stayed up, and I made a big cake because in my yeah, office. I saw it on Instagram, and holy cow, <laughs> that looked amazing. In my office, it's the job of the previous person with a birthday to bring treats for the next person. And we're very chill about it. Normally, it's like your store-bought cupcakes or little brownie bites or whatever. But it happened to be my boss's birthday is the next one after mine. And I'm going to do it upright for boss lady. So I made this big three-tiered chocolate peanut butter cake with Reese's on top, all from scratch. My bone just fell apart at, at like, <laughs> how am amazing that, that was. I, I was proud of it, yeah. And they're all like, what are you doing here? You yeah. need to start a bake. Why are you not a baker? What is wrong with you? <laughs> Why are you here? Like, well, if I leave, you have to take all my projects, and nobody wants that. So I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> If you didn't know, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Whatnots Review Show, where every week we have a different story to talk about. Could, could be a comic, could be a movie, could be an anime, manga, something else. Uh, we read it, we watch it, we come back here, and we talk about it. This week, volumes one through two of a comic book called Wayward. Yeah. Um, I am not prepared at the I am, and actually. Oh, Co-pilot to the rescue. Because I knew I would need help uh, remembering all the characters' names. I have this still open on my tablet. I know it's written by uh, G G G G G G by Jim Zub. Yes, and um, we have line art by Steve Cummings, color art by Tamara Bond Villain, color flats, bon by <laughs> color flats by Ludwig Olimba, and letters by Marshall Dillon. Okay. There we go. That's exactly what I was looking for. I was like, I mm -hmm. should have had all of this pulled up. Um, <laughs> no, I had it this time. Well, thank you. Okay, now I will open Twitch back up in case anyone wants to be like, hey, how are you guys? <laughs> hey. You guys are super cool. Um, Yeah, so this was a book that I think I've heard about for a while. and I've been interested in, but I've never heard enough about it to mm -hmm. really make me pick it up um i i knew it, it, it's 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 a mix between like japanese and irish mythology um or, or, or kind of we'll we'll get in, uh, into that yeah. more down the road but the main character of the book is a young woman who is half japanese half irish mm -hmm. um and she moves to Japan to live with her mom. Uh, it seems like her dad is, may not be the best of dads. Yeah. Um, and I, I just, I liked the idea of that mix of mythology. Yeah. And so I was like, it sounds neat, but that was all I really heard. And so mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't really know what to expect. Um, but. This was one that I, I've had on my list of things to pitch for a long, long time. I was like, let's do that one. Let's, let's yeah. pitch that one. You were the one that picked it. Mm -hmm. I want to know why you picked it. Uh, I Googled it, and I was sold on the artwork. It's a okay. beautiful comic. Yeah. And I, I also like a monster hunting story. I like little supernatural things. And those mythology. are our, you know, cool mythologies. Ghosts and we read, and, um, yeah, we read Dororo, mm -hmm. 
that I said it right because I know I, there's something. There's like a Durara. There's another like manga with a name Dororo. the same except for like two letters. And then there's, there's yeah, Dororo is the one we read, <laughs> and that had a lot of Japanese mythology in it, and I thought that was all really cool. Yeah, that was neat. Um, yeah, so the, I. I've I've I'm excited that we get to talk about this book for this week. Let's let's do a little bit of a plot uh, synopsis mm -hmm. for people who have not read the book just yet. Um, we only read the first two volumes. I I yeah. don't know off the top of my head how many there are in total. Mm -hmm. Um, but it 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 didn't. It seemed like the at least these first two volumes were basically the introduction. Yeah, it's story. really like just setting things up. Um, yeah, and it, it it ends on a really cool note. But for the synopsis, we mentioned the main character moving to Japan. Mm -hmm. Um, she gets there and just kind of has to start her life new. Like she's yeah. it doesn't sound like she's ne ever been to Japan. No, uh, Rory's her name's Rory. Her mm -hmm. mother is from Japan. And was traveling to Ireland when she met her dad and settled down. And then after they got divorced, mom went back to Japan. And now a year after the divorce, when Rory like can't stand her dad for undisclosed reasons, she goes to live with her mom in Japan. And she's never been there. She feels like she has based on how much she's heard about it. But it's all new to her. And her mom is a seamstress. And she's very busy. So as soon as she gets to Japan, Rory is basically on, on her own because her, her mom's own, never yeah. home. And she's just wandering through the city and she wanders into monsters. Yeah, weird monsters and mythological creatures. And she's like, what in the world is going on? And that's when the adventure kind of starts. And she meets yeah. in a really interesting cast of characters. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so if, if I was I was gonna say if you if you like manga and you've never really gotten into like American comics, this oh. might this might be one to check out. Yeah, it's not, yeah, it's a really good bridge between the two. It's not necessarily the same kind of pacing, um, but it's I I I think the artwork is is a little bit manga influenced, mm -hmm. um, and then has that you know has that American co comics influence in there as mm -hmm. well uh I, I think a lot of people are really gonna like it i will say however i'm a, i was a little disappointed with this book um hmm. so we'll we'll get into into that okay in just a sec but um, i'm intrigued yeah a little bit of housekeeping uh if you have not already go like share subscribe sell your soul Tell a, fr fr a friend, tell a foe, tell a spirit, <laughs> or whatever, um, about the, the show. We could absolutely use your help. I know everything and everyone, you know, says go like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff. But it actually <laughs> does help. Uh, it does. Re reviews on iTunes help. Following us on YouTube or uh, following us here on t on Twitch. Uh, which you could actually be watching us live discuss yeah, the book. Come you could join follow us. along at home and and figure out what we're reading and join the live stream and be in the chat with us. Um, yeah, and that would be a lot of fun. That's twitch.tv slash the whatnots or on our website at the whatnots.com slash live streams. Patreon supporters get this podcast early. Uh, just for as a little as a dollar, throw yeah. us some pocket ch change and you can get these episodes early, three days or so early uh, as comp compared to everyone else. All the plebeians. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's it for housekeeping. I'm off the rails right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's dive in to the book. Uh because it's been this is a, d a delayed episode based on all of your yes. moving you've My had fault. to be involved in yeah it's not your it's not your fault it happens but i'm like so, oh boy before this like <laughs> like seeps out of our ears 
Like, let's get to this dank story because it is pretty cool. So I will say that. Yes. It was Saturday night. It was super late Saturday night. I think it was like midnight or one that I was like, hey, so I'm probably not going to be there Sunday morning. I got really drunk. And that was why I was like, I am not going to wake up. I am oh, not going to. Oh, that's gonna... what it was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it was just that unexpected like all of the roommates were in the house at the same t t time for the first time like Aww. let's just drink uh and so we did and then that next night night it was like oh we have to go to the old house to clean and i was like oh well i have a thing to do on monday night can we do t t tuesday no the new people are moving in on tuesday morning ah shit okay <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> here we go <laughs> so here, we, here we are place. on tuesday night recording this when we should have been recording this sunday morning <laughs> anyways let's t talk about wayward volumes one and two you know what i didn't do i didn't do our our little social media things uh, are you bringing them back at, at, at the start yeah so people gotta know who we are they don't know where to find me <laughs> exactly well let's see i think i just turned them on there yeah i know where to find you too but you don't have a cake i don't have a cake i have s selfies in this purple light they're also very good <laughs> so there's that and now that you have our social media things let's go into our spoiler alert yeah yeah okay there From are spoilers on, abound spoilers beware um, As this story takes a turn, I was not expecting it to take. So what 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 were you expecting from this book? Uh, first off, there isn't any overt Irish mythology in it yet. I imagine it's just still getting to that. Like, it's not like a fault of the story. We're just reading like a little tiny opening bit. Yeah. It seems like it's got such a huge scope beyond what we've actually covered. Yeah, I was expecting to see some kind of incarnation of a leprechaun. A selkie. Something more, yeah, or... Brownie. Or, especially since she's, uh, like, her mother's a seamstress. Uh, and, I mean, I guess we're already in sp mm -hmm. spoilers. So that Rory's kind of power is that she has... She is... Yeah. like tied into the strings of fate like there's i, there, I guess you you guys have I, yeah I don't the know red if string of fate japanese yeah the red string of fate but then uh just the the idea of like celtic knots i yeah. i don't know exactly what that means exactly they sure mean but something i know the turn of phrase celtic knots they're gonna get there uh, yeah, and like that would make sense, and I, I was expecting to see a little bit more of that mixed in, but it mainly focused on Japanese stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I mentioned I was a little bit disappointed with this book. Okay, was there something you were looking for that wasn't there? Um, Besides just stuff it seems like it didn't get I, to yet. L l l l let me start by saying this. I think the book opened up really sh sh strongly. I yeah. think that the opening narration uh, coming from Rory to her, like, discovering Japan for the first mm -hmm. time and being like, well, this is my life now. I, I think mm -hmm. that that opening monologue, fantastic. Yeah. I, 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 I think it was written extremely well. I think it started the book. Uh, like it, it was a good place to start because we are discovering the book as she is discovering her new mm -hmm. su 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 surroundings. So it's not like I've been doing this for ten long years and blah blah blah. You know, <laughs> it's like okay, there's a long history that we we, we don't know. Like no one mm -hmm. knows a thing, and so yeah. we're all on the same footing. And I really liked the way it was narrated. And then we don't get that really. We, we, we get more of her narration, but not to that extent. Mm -hmm. Um, until volume two, which it kind of switches characters a little, a little bit. And we uh -huh. get more of that narration, which again I really liked, but then it just kind of goes away, and then it's like, okay, that seems to be like start of the next volume gimmick. And I, I, 
oddly, oddly enough, I think I would have preferred this to just be a book. Uh, no offense to the artists in, in, involved, because again, the artwork is fantastic, but I think that narration for me, mm-hmm. like, sh- sh- struck such a chord that I was like, yes, I want more of that. Yeah. Uh, and then the I rest of it. it was not that, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was your your big fault. Like, they use the narration just sometimes as a storytelling device, and you wished it was a more... A more, pivotal element. Like, I, it's oddly, oddly, oddly enough, I wanted more exposition. That makes sense. Yeah, because it, it 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 is her narration. Is it it is her explaining all of this stuff, right? Um, and then it switches like after the first couple pages, especially after that first issue, to just the stuff that is happening in mm-hmm. the book. Um. And, like, it's not that the stuff was bad, but then on top of that, at the end of these volumes is all this encyclopedic knowledge Mm -hmm. of all of these yokai. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. I was like, like, this is what I want. I want the explanations of these things because I don't understand anything that's happening. Yeah, I wish there would have been more from character to character explanation of the kind of stuff that's in those appendices in the back. Yeah. Like I and it's not like it's written in some like dry old history book style. Like it's a nice fun it's light, you know, explanation of the monsters. But I would have liked it to be in like a real character voice and hear another character like reacting to it. Yeah. Yeah. So I like I I I guess it's a it's it's a weird mix of show me don't tell me but you told me so well that i kind of want more of just you telling me yeah (laughs) i get that that (laughs) makes sense yeah yeah. (laughs) and it is kind of odd how these kids react to like they're reacting to the monsters as a whole they're like well i guess we have to fight monsters but they don't discuss a lot of like specific monster versus specific monster they're not like well what's those ones and why are we fighting these and what happened to the things from last yeah. week are we going to see more never of those been and... to Japan. why is yeah. she not being like there's a fucking koopa, <laughs> koopa thing walking around the ninja turtles want to eat me what is going on there's none of that it's just like oh this is Japan. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> it's like, oh, there's supernatural stuff going on. But I wish, like, the characters were as invested in the bestiary that the audience is. Yeah. Yeah. What? Um, so th- 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 that was a little bit disappointing to me, though. though I-, I-, I think as as the book continues, it, it looks like it'll get more into that down the road mm-hmm. or, or j- j- just... In, in, in enough that I, I think you'll start to see how all of it plays together. Because, mm-hmm. again, I, th- I think we only got a small p- portion of this in the first two volumes. Yeah, I'm – I was really – I think my favorite part of this is the way this book kind of blows away everything you think is going to happen at mm-hmm. the end of the first volume – Because you're kind of expecting a little bit more time spent with Rory, like, adjusting to Japan, like, not fitting in in her high school, struggling in school, like, you know, her her mom's never around, she never sees her mom, how does she tell her mom any of this, and a little bit more of the, like, daily life of leading this double life of, like, trying to be just a normal Japanese high school student and being this monster fighter, but... The first volume ends with her mom, who you do slowly find out is this, like, she's involved in some shadowy stuff. Like, she's benevolent, but, like, I thought that was going to be more of the mystery or the adventure. Yeah, I thought it was her mom. Who, you know, who who is she working for? Do we need to take down this company that is somehow harvesting spirits or you know who knows what yeah and it, that i think that is ultimately going to be it but they take the mom out of the picture like they kill her mom at the end of the first volume yeah. and i was shocked <laughs> melissa like, was taken aback i thought the mom would continue to be like i didn't think it would be so soon to like yeah. reveal that the mom was involved in all of this stuff 
And then to have that happen and to have like, oh, the entire apartment building blows up and they think Rory and Shirai are dead and like they're off in some plane of existence. Like they kind of zapped off somewhere. Like there's no explanation to yeah, that it's, either. It's a little, it's a little fuzzy uh, and they're not they get back into the story of volume two, like closer to the end. So I imagine we're still getting to the, okay, well now that we have a minute of breathing time, let me explain to you what I've been doing over the last couple of months. So that might be a volume three thing, but like everything you think is going to be like some of the major conflicts of the story, like Rory's home life, Rory's school life, that's gone by the end of volume one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's so it's I, an it's an interesting t- twist. I I yeah, I'm trying to think. There was there's something else. It's in the, it's in the back of my mind, but I can't seem to place it. There's another thing that I know that does something similar to that, where everything like it's looking like this book is about to be this one thing, and then bam, nope, they're all dead, and it starts a whole new thing. It's just like oh okay. <laughs> Uh, but I don't remember, so that's k- k- he, kind of a moot point. Yeah, like you're kind of set up to have this more monster of the week sort of expectation, especially because the back of the book bills it as like it's like a contemporary Japanese Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which I'm not yeah. very familiar with, but I know that it is a little bit. It's more monster of the week. It's more um, like ongoing high school drama, personal drama. This week's a monster. You know, here's another monster. Here's another monster. And slowly, it's revealed that there's an, uh, an overall plot. And this is more like, okay, we are really hitting the ground running. This isn't episodic in the least. It's very serialized and it's very fast paced. Yeah. And, and all it's... of the mundane stuff is pretty much out the window, like almost as soon as we have it. It seems it seems to be less a story of like mythology. I mean, I, the mythology is absolutely there, but like that mm-hmm. like magical adventure. We're dealing with spirits and ghosts and demons and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And more like as we find out at the end of the book, these kids are basically a new pantheon of gods. Yeah, and they're wanting to kick all the old g- g- gods out. Yeah, and, and so y- it's uh, then I guess brewing to be this like war of the gods. Yeah, which is neat. Yeah, um, I like how high this book's sights are set. It's really going for stuff. Yeah, I just like it. It it's. I feel like it's a lot of bait and switch with this book. And I, I, I don't know if I like that or not. I I don't know. It definitely keeps you on your toes and it keeps giving you stuff that you're not expecting. And I, like, I was not expecting for the team to keep growing. I thought once we had Rory and Shirai and uh, I think it's Ayane is the cat girl. Mm-hmm. I figured those three were going to be like, uh, yep, those are their names. I figured those three were going to be like the team for a while. So then we get Nikaido and I'm like, oh, okay, a foursome. You know, that also makes sense. Then then in volume two, after Rory is dead, we get Ohara and I actually really liked Ohara like as a character. Yeah. And that was I could tell that was like a weird story twist that I liked, but I know like definitely could rub somebody else the wrong way because it's a big turn for the story to take like volume two the protagonist you knew was dead and here is this other girl who went to like noticed her in passing and like what does she do when she discovers she has powers and she's living in the aftermath of this world and she runs into the other protagonists other remaining friends and now they're this like makeshift backup team trying to do things while you know the main protagonist is gone it's i like it but i recognize oh that's bold and that might not be bold in a way everybody likes yeah yeah it's it's some interesting choices for sure but i definitely think this book is trying to play the long game yeah um because i i think 
even with at the end of volume one when rory and shirai that was his name right yeah um when they seemingly die and then in volume two it's like oh no they're they're back they just somehow evaporated into an alternate dimension um Mm -hmm. that that whole idea like she comes back like a new person almost like she has this clarity about her like i've i've seen the tapestry i know yeah. all the strings of fate and blah 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 and or maybe not that obnoxious of like i know everything <laughs> yeah she isn't uh, but, like her personality isn't changed but, but like is whatever a lot she wiser. went through yeah, it she, gave she her a knows, better understanding of her powers. She and kind knows of something that we don't the yet. The repercussions, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and so that has yet to be revealed. Um, I felt like the motivations of who the antagonists were, I don't, I don't know what they are. <laughs> I, I was, and es- I was especially with this you ending. You knew a little bit more than I did. <laughs> and it, it, especially with this ending ending of like we're the new gods we're gonna kick all the old gods out it's like wait are these guys the bad guys are is this from the perspective of the bad guys i i don't know these are the goddamn hippity hopper young kids and you know (laughs) (laughs) he's our new protagonist it's old suspenders man yeah um yeah i don't know like it's it's it, it's it's all really interesting. I kind of want to know where it goes. Yeah. But again, at the same time, like, I was still v- kind of disappointed that I, I like, it, it, it was, I, maybe it's not that I was disappointed. It was maybe more that just, like, I, 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 I didn't get what I wanted from this book. Mm-hmm. I... I wish it was a l- we get to know um Rory and O'Hara very well because they're both narrative characters that are yeah. giving us this narration in the beginnings of both of their volumes. I I like I said I kind of like that the story has like big goals and it hits the ground running and we're not in any kind of like episodic monster fight of the week sort of thing but what that would have given us was a little bit more character breathing room, a little bit more conversation while these groups like get to know each other and sort of develop patterns and, you know, develop relationships more. Mm -hmm. And because it's so fast paced, like nobody's really a stock character or anything like that, but I wish there was like a little bit more to grab onto. Yeah. Let's get back to antagonist motivation. Um, and I guess let's start with Rory's mom's job. Yeah. What do you think that her whole tapestry of fate thing is exactly? Okay. So I read this over the weekend and I was sick. And so I was like kind of in a haze when I was reading it. And the first thing I lose when I am like knocking priorities off my storytelling list because I am exhausted and feel weird. I'm like, I don't care why any villain is doing anything. I just They're need to bad. know that there is a all villain villains there. Villains are bad. Yeah, yeah. So like, if I'm <laughs> not in the right headspace, that's the first thing like I lose any awareness of. <laughs> so, but so I she... imagine th- they're she... trying to control something. Yes. They've found these people that are seamstresses for the web of the world, the tapestry of the world, and all of life. And they're just trying to skew things some way. way. Like, towards the favor of these older gods, I guess. Yeah. I like I, I was trying to tie that in more to the name of the book of Wayward. Like, mm-hmm. I... I I guess I don't know exactly what the word wayward means, but I'm I'm more thinking along like it it connotates like pathways yes. to me or or like mm. the you know the song carry on my wayward son. Um, <laughs> it's, yes, it's someone who's gone astray, and so ag- yes. ag- again it is it is this like pathway or the, this option of one way you can go. 
I, I guess you're the one with the English degree, so you can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah, it means kind of uh, off the path, like you've gotten away from where you're supposed to be. Like you're blown around in the wind. That makes sense. And and I, there's also this c- concept in there of being like like having your ties severed. Yeah, and kind of being uh, cast aside, whether it be you know through your own choice or just through the actions of others or the hand fate has dealt you, etc. You're just outside of things. Yes. Yeah, or magically ripped out of the tapestry, which I think is what yeah. happened to R- 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 Rory there. Um, but yeah, it's this this interesting thing. I I this supposed company or whoever they work for uh, seems like they're trying to control that t- t- tapestry, but mm-hmm. it d- doesn't. Like I I I I don't know if I can honestly say that they actually are manipulating it though at, at least mm-hmm. to, to an extent that's like we want to take over the world <laughs> uh but it seems like smaller things like the, it's it seemed like they were actually trying to cover stuff up mm-hmm. rather than like oh well we can manipulate the stock market yeah and we can do this we can do this. you know it's like hey we have a plan for down the road we need to we need to maybe push this person to meet this other p- person or yeah. make sure that that guy does not meet that girl, you know? Yeah. It's nothing that is overtly directly harmful to people unless you are like, unless you figure out that something's going on and you are getting in their way. It's not like whoever this consortium is, is like, we're going to set that town on fire. It's like the general public is fine. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um but I I that's partly why I'm wondering what they're up to exactly. Yeah. Cuz we see that and we see a bunch of people working on the 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 tapestry. Mm-hmm. Um but then the the kind of main bad guy we see is uh the like suspenders dude yeah. in the straw hat with the like jellyfish looking yeah head and it yeah it's one of those things like i can tell he's not the one in charge there's mm-hmm. someone else above him but we don't know who that that, that, that is or what yeah. they want yet and we're two volumes in yeah maybe, maybe, maybe i'm just trying to find reasons to not like this book since i was like <laughs> well i didn't get the narration that i wanted for me <laughs> I, I i don't know but that's like that's the thing like nowadays there's so much comics out there there's so much movies or tv shows if if you can't hook people within your first couple episodes or your first couple issues I don't know, like, you, you know, you, you, you still might be successful in the long run, but it might not be as, to- as talked about as, like, Game of Thrones or Black Mirror, you know, who knows, I, I, just, just some examples that are big in the public consciousness, this, right? I don't, how old is this story? Like, when was this published? I actually how don't know. How long has this been I going was, on? I was going to ask you that when, if, when um, we were let talking me see. about the, the artwork. I've got, like, the, um, oh, okay. Volume 2 published August 2015. This might okay. still be going or it might have wrapped up. I don't know. This seems like sure, the kind yeah. of story that maybe isn't very well known but if somebody has heard of it they probably really like it or like have something about it that they really like because i've never heard of this but like everything i you know all the little blurbs on the back are glowing of course but they're like glowing in a way that i get like yeah yeah i understand that i i feel the same i that makes sense to me and this seems like one of those little maybe not a cult classic but like one of those stories like Oh, you like that thing too? Oh, nobody's heard of that thing, but it's great, isn't it? I wish more people would read it. It's one or, of those. Or, or, or like, hey, oh, if you like this particular author, if you like mm-hmm. that, hey, here's some of his other stuff. 
Yeah. That might be not as in the mainstream eye. Um, I, go ahead. I would like to talk about the art because that was what yes. sold me on this on this pitch to begin with. And I think that is the thing I am left feeling the most impressed by. This is a yeah. gorgeous book. I love the colors, like the color palettes and the way everything is lighted and sh- everything, the way everything is lit and shaded. Like it just feels very lush. It's not like overly glossy the way I've seen occasionally some comic books to be like, why are all your clothes shiny? What is this? <laughs> but it's just beautiful and vivid. I loved everybody's clothes. This was something I really picked up on. Melissa and- doesn't like shiny clothes. <laughs> no, I, lo- I love a shiny clothes. Uh-huh. <laughs> Do you know what I am talking about? Yeah. Where, like, somebody just goes crazy with that highlight brush. (laughs) This is, it's reined in. But everybody's, all the girls' skirts are drawn with, like, such big, lush, like, they're so flowy and loose and, like, billowy. Like, I've never seen skirts so lovingly illustrated in, like, a comic (laughs) book before. And I love that. Like, that hit me. Interesting. Yeah, because this isn't, um, it's a book about teenage girls. It's not necessarily a book for teenage girls. It's not, not to say it's like, oh, it's young adult, but anybody could enjoy it. Like, it just seems like that's not the audience they are aiming for, even if that's who they're writing about. Like, it's just females, like, maybe a little Mm -hmm. bit mature than that. Maybe a little bit more just general story happens to be about teenagers but it hit that like teenage girl wish fulfillment part of me that's like it's an interesting mix between american comics and japanese Mm -hmm. mentioned that at the start but i was also gonna ask you when this book was coming out um because of the artwork Mm -hmm. i i i liked the artwork i i think it's fantastic fantastic uh tamra bon Valon is a fantastic colorist mm-hmm. but i think the co- 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 the combination of the coloring and the line art and the manga influence it kind of reminded me of some like early 2000s art artwork in american comics i can understand that um which i i don't mean that in a bad sense because early 2000s is yeah. when everyone was also discovering gr- gradients uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know um, digital coloring was big yeah but like like if i i feel like if artwork had kept that style and advanced it to a p- p- point where it's like whoa this is really good that's what this book would be like mm-hmm. it it seemed a lot like that okay I, I'm glad you mentioned the early 2000s because that's what the fashions reminded me of a yeah. lot. Like these all seemed like outfits that 14 year old me would have dreamed of. And I <laughs> like that. I like that it's not like super wish fulfillment. Like they're not popping out these glorious, like princessy magical girl outfits, but it's mm-hmm. just like everyday fashions. Like just like interesting, oh, you like... bring that up though, because mm-hmm. you you said this is a c- c- comic about teenage g- g- girls, not necessarily for teenage girls. Just enough to like hit the right. inner I, I, teenage girl inside me. I I know what you mean, but like it it has that mix of it's 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 structured like an American comic, though it has the motion and the action, and I think the pacing of a manga mm-hmm. and it 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 has artwork that's kind of a mix and we see characters who are the like superheroes but they're gods rather than superheroes but they're also yeah. t- teenagers but we get a mix of guys and g- girls and so it mm-hmm. is like this almost magical girl transformation when they start using their powers and yeah I mean, they don't do the whole spinning thing, and you know, um, but it, yeah, it's it's. I I feel like it's a 
perfect blend of all of that stuff, which I mm-hmm. I think is super rare. And mm-hmm. if I tried to do that, I mean, I'm not a comic book writer, so I'd be terrible at that stuff anyways. But I feel like it'd be really difficult to do just from an art standpoint to mix all of those genres and influences all into one like mm-hmm. smooth thing yeah yeah so, i kudos to the creative t- t- team yeah i also um i was the what about it reminded me of early 2000s fashion where all the arm warmers which was something that is so arm warmers <laughs> so frivolous and like so there's so the, the amount of times you would legitimately need an arm warmer are so slim, but I remember those being big when I was like 14 years old. And I had I like I had friends that had skinnier arms that could wear the arm warmers, and I'm like, oh, those are cool. And in hindsight, I'm like, what are you gonna do with arm warmers? Arm warmers are dumb, but they also are in Japan. We have to keep that in my mind. And maybe arm warmers are a bigger, more consistent modern fashion thing over there. I've, I've seen some interesting fashion coming from there, and it's like, <laughs> what? That's still a thing? Wow. Okay. But it didn't strike it's fashion, me as. And I know nothing about that. <laughs> it didn't strike me as like, oh, what's this? What's this one weird dated element doing in this fairly modern comic book? It just reminded me of. Oh, I remember being fourteen and wishing I could look cool. <laughs> Like, it was used effectively. I've never seen arm warmers used effectively because it just made me feel, like, nostalgic and girlish. And then it's no ultimately there. No arms have ever been warmed effectively. <laughs> and it's ultimately there for plot reasons. Like, we find out that it, Rory has been cutting herself to deal with. And it's like the kanji for a loan, too. <laughs> She's well, been cut, that's, which is. That's something I want to ask about. Yeah. I think that's somehow involved with her powers. Yeah, because she shows up later and it doesn't say alone anymore. It's adapted into like a different kanji that means something uh, more positive and like more, you know, it shows that she's grown more confident in her powers. And it doesn't show that like yeah. Which, she carved it like, I've changed my mind. I'm going to cut myself one last time to make this not say alone. It's going to say something better. And then no, I'm done. No more. Yeah, I like found just, a boyfriend. It just, just shows. I'm alone. It just shows up. So it seems like it must have happened magically, but we don't know if she consciously like made that happen or if it just like did that and well, attuned so, to her like inner spirit. So within that first issue of the comic book is when Rory gets her first like flash at her powers she's never had them before so something about being in japan or at least close to her mom or where she works i don't know if that's the source of the tapestry um yeah who knows but yeah she she has that first like incident like what the hell was that where she sees this like red stringing pathway um but then yeah, without any explanation, I think it's like an issue or two after that, she can do this thing where she can just like write these magical runes and yeah, there's like no she... explanation. Like, whoa, I've never been able to do that before. Yeah. I thought I hit puberty a few years ago. Yeah. Is my body like, still I, changing? No. I it, like... wish this was more, a, like 10% more x Men y and that she it's just like. do it. What are these powers? How did I get these powers? Let me practice with these powers. Let my friends and I practice working on our powers together. Like, yeah. I just need, like, one danger room kind of scene. Yeah, and so she she does, uh, like, she does a couple of them on other people, and it looks more like a flame-style writing, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm... I'm wondering because well the the first one that says alone did did she actually cut that into herself i don't remember yes yes that one you can tell is definitely like a real like hand carved scar and it's i'm wondering if it's magic as well and she didn't actually and that's like how it manifests on her skin maybe i do i do wonder about that because her power is like 
kanji based and honestly to like have her be cutting the kanji for alone into her skin is like a little Super emo it's, it's also little... very 2006 yeah so. yeah it's like a little <laughs> too dramatic yeah to have that and not just like it's... some lines or something I... or an x or something like that especially at the pace that this comic is moving yeah. and with how li 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 little we get of their like day-to-day -day thoughts and l lives and stuff like that i'm wondering if it was meant to be her actually cutting and it, it like because to me it seems like it's out of place to have a have a topic like that or a character who it does that and be like whoa that's that's it is, really it heavy. is a like, big thing to put in a story. Yeah. And and then for them to just not deal with it. That's why I was like, I wonder if that's just what it looks like and how it manifests. Yeah, I, I am curious because it's like a kanji and the rest of her power do like she like draws the kanji in the air and it makes something happen with her like little red the string yeah, power. So if it's like if she has to do it on someone else, she does yeah. it on their forehead. If it's like out in the air, she just does it there. But if it's on yeah. herself, she might, you know, have to. Yeah, Be because it's a conjure, I wonder if it is like magical powers related. I am curious where that's going to go because it is a big, serious, like very real topic. And it has to be handled very deftly. And they haven't. Yeah done much with it and i don't know what they're planning to do with it it's an interesting choice for sure mm -hmm. I, I guess i'm wondering if it, the original idea was to have her c cut and then be like oh we should backtrack that or magic <laughs> or at least have it be in, tied into something a little bit more plot relevant outside of just her yeah. own personal yeah. struggles and you know maybe her relationship with her parents or whatever just give it a little bit more uh, uh something beyond just personal matters yeah. like really put it to work and make it pay off in some other part of the story yeah mm. but anyways that might be a little bit of an uncomfortable subject for yeah. some people um, yeah what, what did you think of the other people's powers did did you have a like a favorite character? Were you? Oh yeah, I really liked Ohara. Yeah, I liked that she occupies this very interesting space of everything in her life is kind of planned out for her. Like she goes to school, like she gets good grades. Her dad's proud of her. Like her mom wants her to like grow up and go to college and marry like a nice husband that'll provide for her. And everything's kind of like laid out in front of her and she's kind, kind of, of the culture yeah and or at, at least from, from what we is, see a lot in true. like manga and mm. anime and stuff and i and she's in this very interesting between space where she's kind of wondering what else is out there but she also like kind of appreciates like it is all taken care of, of all. Yeah, yeah yeah like there's a pattern like it's comfortable like i don't really have room to stretch my legs but how much do i really need to and i feel like you often see people like you often see characters that are fighting too much against that and to have somebody who's like i think i might be okay here is just something new and something <laughs> i don't know something i liked reading about just her kind of feeling things out and like you know the most rebellious thing she does is that she goes and she buys gotcha pawns and her dad's like no, I think they're kind of silly and childish. And, like, that's the major conflict She's in like, her life. screw you, Dad, they're action figures. <laughs> like, they're not fighting about it. I think, you know, it's probably something he just sort of occasionally frowns at. But, <laughs> like, that's as much as she has in her life. And I like that it's so normal and small and that she isn't, like, oppressed or rebellious or anything like that because it makes the magic that she falls into so much bigger and stronger when it is the most intense feeling of her life. And what were her powers again? Exactly. She Does she, can, she, she can manipulate she somehow. Yeah. Has is tied in with the tapestry thing too. Right. 
she can manipulate man-made materials. That's right. So not like wood or stone, but like cement or glass or plastic or like she tries to, t- you know, like morph her hand through her shirt, but she like can't. It's dog. cotton. Yeah, <laughs> like a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> like she can't do it on really natural materials, but man-made stuff she can like morph through and shape and she can like adapt it to her. Like she can form like a metal glove around her hand or she can like punch through this big metal pipe and then like a big metal like big blown out big fist, fist appears on yeah. the other end it's visually really cool i think it is a lot of like neat narrative openings for things you could do with it yeah it's it's a interesting restriction mm-hmm. too because a, 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 a lot of people i mean especially n- 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 nowadays there's not very many power combinations that haven't already been done yeah uh and so you you always see these like knockoff x-men books or something (laughs) like that and you're just like oh you're that other character or 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 something like oh that was a stretch i (laughs) you were really (laughs) trying to come up with something there it's not a good power you just wanted a power nobody had read before regardless (laughs) of how neat it is but i like this and i like how it resonates with her story she is living this man-made life where like all of her her parents her school like society's expectations of just what a young lady you know of a certain class in japan does like they've laid out what she's supposed to do it is man-made and she is it's a plastic life and she can take plastic and she can morph it and she can use it to make her stronger and i like that it reflected that the world she'd been living in, she recognized was something that could benefit her and maybe wasn't really so bad. I I feel like her character arc, especially now that you mentioned that, that's not even something I would have thought of in a million <laughs> years. That was brilliant. But Again, I'm, this well, is more like inner teenage girl thinking. I'm I'm wondering if her story arc is going to be about her being more assertive. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 just, just her as a character instead instead of being this I want to live this structured life not so so much that it's like I'm going to be super punk rock screw uh-huh. the man blah 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 but just be like no I can take my own life into my own hands if that yeah. means I need to live this structured life that's what I'll do if that means I need to move t- t- to a new town that's what, what what I'll do, you know. Um, whereas I, it it seems like now she's in high school, so it's just like, yeah, I do what my parents tell me. Yeah, I, you know. Um, and I think Rory, mm. especially having her, uh, like her story, I I feel like is is then a mix of like, I like she feels like she's been dealt a bad hand maybe Mm -hmm. like she's not in control of her own fate and at the end of the day she is with her new powers right yeah um so i'm trying to think of what was uh what's his names and shirai or yeah shirai shirai he can no longer eat he has to sustain himself on spirits spirits and he has these like scars around his mouth, and it looked like I veins. guess like with, I don't know, it looked like almost like kind of like puckered up scarring or like yeah or like burnt something skin. like that. Yeah, yeah. And again, like, and it didn't show us exactly how that happened. If this is the result of some other like trauma in his life or something like that, or if this was something his powers too many did warheads. to him. like maybe it's something like with rory like oh are your powers having a physical manifestation on your body that isn't entirely explained yet what if his whole thing is you are what you eat and he's just slowly fading away he's gonna become a ghost yeah I have no idea. You sent me on on the like, oh, let's really dive into the like metaphors of their powers. Yeah. I didn't come up with them for all of them. I just I just had O'Hara. <laughs> um I I actually really really liked Ayane. 
Mm-hmm. I I feel like she was the most mysterious character yeah. because she was the one that she she was the first uh like other character that we met that had some kind of powers and like uh-huh. mysteriously disappeared. Why the yeah. hell are all these cats around here? What is going on? We don't know anything. And yeah, and then she fits in with the whole like cat obsession that Japan yeah. or like I guess the whole world has <laughs> but yeah uh especially in Japan like it it's a lot more co- common to see like cat themed cosplay and stuff like that so she fits mm-hmm. in as eccentric as her hair or her teeth might look in in this co- comic book or what her like personality might be it fits in with what's around her Mm -hmm. um and so it's it's one of those things that's like her powers are completely showing but she blends in so well and that kind of causes her to just go below the radar which was neat yeah um and then there was i i I forget exactly what was happening but Um. there was that really quiet yeah I think where she's ca- kind of running out oh. of her powers um, i thought you were gonna talk about the really quiet kid <laughs> that, what i i don't know i don't know enough about him to really like yeah, him we, yet i yeah i don't dislike I feel like he was him. my I, least favorite uh we just know the least about him like he's very quiet by his nature and except for ohara he is the last person added to the team so that's it's yeah. kind of the point of him. Like, it makes sense why we don't know as much about him. But for Ayane, mm-hmm. um, there's a moment where she kind of collapses into, yeah. I think it's the co- quiet k- k- kid's lap. Mm-hmm. And it's, 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 it's just a nice little character moment. Yeah. Which, again, as fast as this book moves, we don't really get those. Mm-hmm. So, like, that stood out to me. It's like, oh, like, that is something I can l- 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 latch onto to help me understand these characters more. So, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And she's got, like, a whole weird backstory where she's actually, like, centuries old. And the Ayane we know is just a manifestation of her carried around by cats. Then there was that weird future version of her, but which is which was also not her, or was that in the pa- 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 past? We don't know. Was it an alternate I dimension? I don't know. This was another thing. I'm like, it was I'm... an alternate Ayane, and she was an older woman. Yeah, just like, like an old cat woman, <laughs> an old old cat lady. That was one of those things where I said to myself, "You're sick. You don't have to pay attention to this." Maybe Kyle well, will. <laughs> this was that 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 thing. It it, it, it uh, Rory and Shirai mm-hmm. disappear for a while, while, yes. while, and I think when it starts to explain kind of where they went, we see them basically at the house of this old cat lady. And I remember course, the general after, scene, but like yeah. I couldn't piece together. Like, I saw A and I saw B, and I don't know how you got from one to the other exactly. It's a straight line, Melissa. God damn it. <laughs> um, straight line through a bunch of cats. But, but yeah, like, that's one of the things. It didn't really explain it because mm-hmm. we, like, they were like, wait a minute. Ayane? And she's like, who? Yeah. I don't, I don't know who Ayane is. I don't know who you guys are. So it, it's not future ayane but th- this idea of yeah she might be thousands of years old what if the like human form of her has it, it's not it's not that that same yeah. person has been you know so if that was the future maybe the ayane we know is going to kick the can huh. or maybe that was in the past i don't know no and, it, and the the Ayane we know is her daughter or something, or her great great granddaughter. I, I, who knows? Um. But yeah, it was just like, <laughs> what is happening? 
What? I don't I don't understand this. There's a lot to unpack just in these two volumes. Like they they're they're going for it. Like they're swinging for the fences on this. And even if I don't get all of it yet, I like that they're this ambitious. Yeah. Yeah. It's um again, I think they're playing the long mm-hmm. game. And I think however long this story ends up being or ended up being uh i think it's one that once you go back and read it again you're gonna be like oh i see this easter egg yes, i see that exactly. easter egg i see this yeah. i see that i get what's happening now mm-hmm. oh, which is neat but then at the same time i don't want those types of stories to be super long because then it's a hassle to yeah watch them all you know or read mm-hmm. read them all in this case yeah it's a pretty fast read though i i recommend it even even just for like the art alone gorgeous stuff yeah good stuff i Mm -hmm. i um i've read one other thing from jim zub that i liked Uh a lot and it was his samurai jack comics i'll be Um, back Back yeah the past exactly samurai jack uh actually we covered it on a episode of the whatnots podcast back when this show used to be just the whatnots podcast uh-huh. a long long time ago uh paul and i covered them i really liked them it picked up where the show left off good uh, which was neat uh so if you were a fan of the show you could check it out um but yeah i i like i I know Jim Zub writes some stuff for Marvel as well. I think he puts a lot of his scripts uh, up on Patreon as, huh. as well. So if you like his work, you can get more into his process and stuff like that, um, which is neat. I, that's something I don't I don't see a lot of creators do, uh, mm-hmm. or at least comic book creators. They do like sketches and stuff, but it's usually like, hey, yeah. not my actual I, I i know i guess his scripts are like however many months behind it's not the mm-hmm. one like my new issue is out on wednesday here's the script <laughs> you know yeah uh, but it's like hey remember that co- comic i did eight months ago here's that one mm-hmm. here's the script um but yeah did i kind of want to go back to the villains because I, I, okay. I, I, again i'm i'm really fascinated by all the extra material that's in the back of the the volumes that i think yeah. was by far the most fascinating part of this book um just to read about how the god was or her or how one certain god was not actually a god it was a spirit but then mm. through time it did this and that and now it's a fox and you know yeah all of that's like whoa this is fascinating i love this um mm-hmm. Did did you have a I I guess a favorite villain or like a a favorite because we saw tons we saw the yeah. turtle looking people we saw the fox looking ones mm-hmm. we saw the more uh, like monster bug looking ones then we saw Gigi, the guy with the straw hat and the suspenders mm-hmm. we saw some like weird the spider woman yeah the yeah uh and then like the crouching tiger kung fu dude when they ran into the ambush there there was all sorts Mm -hmm. and yeah again it's one of those things i think there's so much to unpack that Mm -hmm. i i i don't i don't feel like we really can having only read the first two volumes yeah what did you like was was there one that stood out ah i okay so i don't did you not like them were you like all the villains were bad no i liked all the villains uh they're visually great yeah i wish there was like a little bit more distinction from one to the other in terms of like the repercussions of what they're doing like if one of them was like Oh, these are little ones that we can beat easily, but they might come back. They're sneaky. Like if they had a team rocket of villains, and if they had like not exactly, but you know, just like team in that Yoka there. Is blasting off again. 
But just in that, like, oh, you're more of a nuisance than you are a real threat, but you keep showing up versus, like, okay, this guy's really destructive. Like, we have to take them down, and, like, maybe we can take them down for good. That weird bird guy, too, with the long nose. Oh, like you've the seen, Tengu. The, the, like, yeah, the red-faced dude. You've, yeah. you've seen masks, I'm sure, that yeah. has that, that, that Yeah, face. oh, that guy. The, yeah. The long nose. Yeah, like, the villains are so cool-looking. <laughs> But in terms of, like, their effect on the story, like, from one monster fight to the next monster fight, I wish there was, like, a little bit more. But I just, I wish there was less of them at the moment, or at least less that mattered. Yeah, yeah. Or seemed like they mattered. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know. I kind of liked, so my favorite ones were the foxes, Mm because foxes are my favorite animal, even though I know nothing about them. Uh, uh, except the, that they're sly. You know, they're but, red uh, and they are <laughs> friends with hounds. These are your fox facts. Don't bring up terrible memories, okay? <laughs> Sorry. You're making me cry. No. Um I yeah, I I, I like the foxes and mm-hmm. in the back of the book, yeah, it turns out the foxes are more of the, the messengers for mm-hmm. one of the Spear. I, I I don't remember ex- exactly, mm-hmm. but it was like the god of the like rice harvest or something okay. like that. And they were like, we actually don't know how the foxes became to be the messengers. The, they just one day were. Uh, but I liked the d- 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 designs that they were bigger, more like wolves, and they had those like mystical. Uh, I guess markings on their head. Yeah, it, it, it and just they looked, looked almost like, like oh, that looks cool. I like. Yeah, this. and their ears were like turned so far up that they almost looked like bat-like. Those were cool yeah. designs. Yeah, I liked those I... a lot. I had <laughs> so the turtle-looking uh-huh. ones. Those are c- called kappas. Yes, and I just put it together in my head that the villains in mario are koopas <laughs> yeah koopas and kappas uh, so i'm i'm wondering if that just like is that a cutification somehow just like the I bet koopas. it is the koopas i not, bet so not kappas koopas um i i don't really get what she was about again I kind of zoned out on some things because I was sick. And this story definitely needs a second reading to begin with. But I loved that spider lady because she's she lives in this. Well, whenever we see her, she's in this weird like bar or lounge, but nobody's there except sometimes for these full human bodies wrapped head to toe in like cobwebs and it's just eerie like she was probably the eeriest of all yeah it, <laughs> it it looked like it was full of like restaurant booths or something though like i mean there could be brothel rooms in the back but yeah it's got that That's kind what of they like did. the upstairs were yeah the, yeah hey, let's go upstairs um wherever it is she is i i love that she she's just the eeriest one the most unsettling one yeah that one was actually scary Mm-hmm. Um, but did 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 you read the like back of the book stuff on her? Or I, I think I, I on that. I think I did, but again, stuff? I don't really remember. I don't remember the Japanese name. I think it translated more literally to something oh, yeah. like horse to spider. spider whore. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's like oh, oh okay, <laughs> get right right on the nose here. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh. Yeah, so like it, it had something to do, I think, with the prostitutes of the time or the mm-hmm. women in the brothels, and one of them might have been a demon, and blah 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 blah. You know, so it's just this like, Ooh, they're they're gonna get you, they're gonna eat you, and <sighs> catch you in their web, you know. Um, but but yeah, like I I, I think when used in this almost like clash of the titans war between the, the god yeah. like she becomes really scary it's like oh yeah. she she's really like she can be really effective uh on on a whole bunch of people mm-hmm. she'd be an assassin 
extracting information stuff yeah, like that. So. I'm I'm intrigued about her because like I said, we never really saw anybody around her. Like she's in this place that very well could be a brothel. Mm-hmm. But we guess that from her, not from some, like, very much about room. what is going on. Like there's nothing around her. Like she operates like in isolation. And like you can tell like she's gotten rid of everybody around her. Yeah. Like how does that woman operate? What does she do? Where'd she come from? Crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. Crazy stuff. Um, I think that's all I have to say about. Yeah. The I. I I had a rough time with the book. Like I said, I was a little disappointed. I don't think the book is bad though. No, I liked it. Um, I I I I would pass it along to certain people. I think mm-hmm. that makes sense. Again, I, at the start I said if if you're into manga and you haven't really gotten into many American comics, mm-hmm. this might be one to check out. Yeah, um, which is a good hybrid. Um, do you, can can you think of something to recommend if if people liked this? What else do you think they would like? Ah, if they liked the sort of young lady confronting her powers and her possible family ties to those powers and how these are going to shape the entire future in front of her, maybe go back and read Chilling Adventures of Sabrina like we did. Interesting. Which is a lot more like, it's a smaller story. It's very character driven. It's a lot more horror based. It's got a lot more of the everyday life of like going to school and things like that. It's less of this, you know, high speed run towards fighting a bunch of monsters and like tearing mm-hmm. apart the fabric of all of the world. But yeah, <laughs> if you want a small scale, spooky, powerful girl adventure. Try there Sabrina. Go. There you go. Um, I have two, no, Mm -hmm. one recommend. I'll stick with two, and I'll say my first one, which I guess may be very tan. This one might be a stretch. Um, Uh Uh-huh. Excuse me. I would say, uh, I believe it's pronounced Modica Magica. Oh yes, like that. Mm-hmm. So you, you you know who, who, what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. I've had this recommended to me a couple times. I haven't watched it yet. It's a magical girl anime. Actually, it might be a manga as well. Um, but yeah, kind of flips the whole genre on its head and ends up taking a very dark turn. Um, but it yeah, it, it appears to be this like very cutesy sailor moon like magical mm-hmm. girl type of thing and then by the end it's like whoa what is happening here this is mm-hmm. this is strange um i i've seen a little bit, 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 bit of that i need to pay more attention to it to really understand it um but i liked it and i think it has the like it it it, it has i i think the potential to be dark if that makes like the yeah. this book wayward has the potential to go the route that that did okay. uh, which is why i would recommend that but um come on brain don't fail me now i had go for it a second one what was it oh my god um it was a com oh I remember what it was. I had to re trace my steps there. I was like, it's American co- comic book, Spider Lady. I know what it is. No, it is not Spider Woman. Um, it is, I believe, Ed Brubaker and Matt Fraction's run on the Immortal Iron Fist. Oh. Uh, there's a Netflix show, Iron Fist. Wasn't very good. Mm. Um, but. There is a run on Iron Fist from, I believe it's Brew Baker and Matt Fraction, I think with David Aja on art. C- 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 could be wrong. But um, 
it is very much like martial arts tournament uh, style stuff, but each kind of iron fist from these different realms or the, oh. these like champions from all these different realms come together and they are uh, like, a, you know, they all have their own fighting style and stuff like that. But there is a character or I think sisters, if I r- remember correctly uh that are like the spider sisters oh uh, and they have that like really creepy dark v- 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 vibe Ooh. um so yeah i i would recommend that i think that would be an interesting next step especially if you're coming from manga you read this and then want something else that's like the the the, the next step because it's like fighting tournament type of martial arts stuff i don't know whatever Mm -hmm. that's what i would recommend there we go oh um so since we are doing this on a delayed yeah we already decided uh next week's thing so that we had the opportunity to get a head start on it if we wanted to because we're recording so late but to recap the pitches for the audience if they are interested in the thought process that goes into these Mm -hmm. Uh, these were my pitches and they were my Valentine's Day set of pitches, which I was very excited for because I'm a big, I'm a big old sap. I'm a big softy. And this is my favorite time of year. And I pitched you three fantastical romances. (laughs) And uh, the first one was the movie Ghost, which I considered for Halloween, but tabled for Valentine's Day because it's more romantic than spooky. And I'm not going to go into describing these too much because, you know, I already described them to you in the audience. You can go look it up. You can look up what Ghost is. what we're doing for next week. You know, it's the pottery wheel. Whoopi Goldberg plays a psychic. It's cool. A man dies and has to use her to talk to his wife from beyond the grave. Amazing. And uh, one of my other pitches was this TV miniseries from the year 2000. That made a giant impression on me when I was 10 years old. And it's called The Tenth Kingdom. And it's this like fairy tale mashup where this woman from New York City falls through a magic mirror and her dad's with her too. So there's also this just like That's grumpy, awkward. like, yeah, just like a grumpy <laughs> middle aged man is there also, which is bah, great. Humbug. Like, Like, she falls through a magic mirror into a world where every fairy tale is real and, like, the human embodiment of the big bad wolf who's the sort of quasi, like, is he human? Is he wolf? Who is he? But, like, he falls in love with her and she has to deal with that and they have to, like, stop an evil witch from stealing the throne away from a prince and there's trolls and, like, magic beans and the whole nine yards. All the fairy tale, like goofy storybook romance stuff and i loved it there you go and but what you ended up picking was pushing daisies we're gonna watch season one of that yeah this is brian fuller's tv show from 2007 and this is about a pie maker who has the ability to bring things back from the dead with a touch but if he touches them again then they stay dead And he does this to his childhood crush. And so they're reunited again and they are in love, but they cannot touch each other. It's like Rogue (laughs) from the X-Men. Yeah, yeah. They have to like kiss each other through like a roll of plastic wrap. Full body condoms. Yeah, they have to go ballroom (laughs) dancing together while they're both wearing full beekeeper suits. Like it's really creative how they get around it. And, you know, together they solve murder mysteries, and also the show is a musical sometimes. It's a lot. It's a lot. Like, I was really excited for you to maybe watch this thing I loved when I was 10 years old, and I would get to show it to you and we could talk about it. But Pushing Daisies is the most important thing for you to see on this list. So I'm glad that's what you picked. I, I Yeah, I, felt, I feel like this was a really important show when it was on tv it, it didn't last yeah. that long right no it just lasted two seasons and they're not very long seasons yeah like i i remember it having a very short run but a lot of people really liked it and even after it was gone people were like that show was genius yeah so 
heard heard good things that's why i yeah. wanted to finally cross that off my list of i've watched that yeah it's a good choice that. i'm looking forward cool, to good. this one yeah that is what we will be talking about for next episode uh which uh, it, we normally record sundays at noon eastern time mm-hmm. um so did, was that your mic stand or something yeah yeah i just accidentally like hit one of those little springs it it sounded like the piano in in a horror movie. Oh, I'm sorry. When something goes wrong, just doom. Um, but yes, pushing Daisy's season one for this next week. I think it'll be good. It'll be interesting for me to, to watch because I'm settling into my new place. I'll be playing Kingdom Hearts and then forcing myself to take. <laughs> breaks by watching these are your, these are your hand breaks daisies. when you can't work the controller anymore you'll watch this yes. yeah exactly <laughs> so should be fun i'm looking <laughs> forward to it uh M- melissa where can the people find you on the interwebs you can find me on twitter and instagram at wilkywit that's w-i-l-k-y-w-i-t and you can find me at yo kyle springer on twitter and instagram you guys want updates with the show you can follow us on twitter at the whatnots uh that's where we will post all of the updates or when we're going live uh or retweeting news and stuff that we think you guys might like who knows um but yeah if you guys enjoyed this show please support us on patreon that would be absolutely lovely throw away your life savings that would be lovely too don't question what i just said that would be lovely as well <laughs> patreon.com slash the whatnots give us all your money yeah <laughs> the end do, it. do what the man says <laughs> do what the man says god damn it <laughs> um yes so we will see you guys next week thank you for joining adios guys bye bye